Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm super excited to be part of the My Favorite Fall Colors hop. This is a video hop featuring lots of awesome designers. I'm going to show you how I made this autumn themed camping cart with a real light up campfire. And I've also got a fun trick to show you how to make your card smell like toasted marshmallows. Now you might wonder why I picked camping as a theme for a fall card. Well, I live in Southern California and it's just too hot for us to go camping during the summertime. So we save our trips for the fall. In fact, we've got a big family trip coming up at the end of the month to celebrate my uncle's birthday. So this is gonna be his card. I'm going to start out using my power pack kit. This has everything you need to make three different light up cards and the Kindred Stamps camping stamp set. Um, this is actually, you can buy those two together as a bundle on the Kindred Stamps website and I'll have a link to that down below. My card is going to be a four by nine inch card that'll fit into a standard letter size envelope, a number 10 envelope. I've gone ahead and cut out my card base and folded it and then I've also cut a piece of four by nine inch uh, watercolor paper and I'll uh, watercolor the background on it. Now for the ground I have cut a strip of craft colored cardstock and it's 11 inches long by about an inch and a half tall. I used a stitched hillside uh, die to go ahead and uh, cut it apart. You just move the die over. I did the same thing with that mama elephant die for the uh, mountain border there on gray cardstock. And then I went ahead and I stamped, embossed, and fussy cut my images. I used my scan and cut. My thumbs don't like fussy cutting. Um, all of those images are on watercolor paper. The fire I did stamp twice with uh, uh, vellum and then watercolor paper. And then I cut out my sentiment using a stitched rectangle die that just happened to be the, the right size. And then I've got a bunch of watercolor cardstock pieces that I've gone ahead and die cut. I cut some trees and some tree trunks from this Heffy Doodle set. And then I've also gone ahead and cut out some pine trees. Uh, I did use the smaller pine tree die in this set to go ahead and cut out some green cardstock just for background pieces. I don't need to add extra color to those. Um, all my dimension and, and coloring is going to be on the pieces that are in the foreground. Now that border die, the, the mountain border there, has snowy hilltops, so I went ahead and cut those out as well. And then I wanted some more greenery to fill in, so I used this little fern out of Linda Canasi's, uh, I think that's the spring things, no, I'm sorry, the tiny nature die set there. I'll have links to everything in my blog. And then my secret to make it smell great is some sweetened condensed milk. And you're also going to want some cornstarch. Now when all of my pieces are cut out, the next thing I'm going to work on is cutting out the inside of the, the fire here. So I'm basically creating a frame for the vellum piece. And I'm going to go ahead and use my craft knife to cut out the inner two layers of fire. This, this image has three layers of flames. So I'm cutting out the inner two. And I will reserve the piece that I'm cutting out uh, because the vellum is translucent. When I go ahead and adhere the card together, if you can see through the vellum at all, you don't want to see the background, the, the hills and the trees that are behind it. So I will color in that piece and, and put it on the back of the card, just so that uh, the, the flame image carries all the way through. Now you'll notice that the vellum piece is cut slightly smaller. It's just inside the outside edge of the line there. And that's so that when I layer them up together, no vellum peeks out. And I wanted to add a little bit of color, so I've grabbed my Copic markers in a red, an orange, and a yellow. Copic markers are great for vellum because it dries quickly. It is a little bit streaky like alcohol ink would be, but it's fine for flames. I, in fact, I, it lends itself very well. I like it the way that it's turned out. If I used water-based markers, they wouldn't dry as fast, and sometimes they won't dry at all. I'm not going to glue this together yet because I do need to color the rest of the fire there. But before I color my small images, I want to color my background. That's going to set the tone for everything else. And so I've gone ahead and grabbed my 4 by 9 inch piece of cardstock. That's the watercolor paper there, sorry. And I'm going to wet the top half um, just with clear water. And then I'm using my Gonzai Tombi watercolors to start painting in my sunset. So I'll start with red at the top, bring in some oranges, and come down uh, with yellow. So I get like a golden sunset there. I did bring in my 
mountain background piece there just so that I can make sure I brought the color down low enough, and I did. Um, and I'm going to keep adding more color and blending it. I do want to to make sure that this is really rich and vibrant. The watercolors do dry back and they'll lighten up a little bit as they dry, which is expected. It's normal with all watercolors. Um, but I'm going to just keep adding layers until I'm happy with it. And then notice that I'm bringing in some purple around the outside edges. My friend Marie made a card the other day and she used these same red golds and then brought in a pop of purple and it was so beautiful. I never would have thought of adding purple to a fall color scheme, but I loved it so much I decided that I wanted to mimic that here. So I've got a link to her video in my blog as well so you can check that out and see how pretty that is. I did go ahead and heat set it just so that I would see exactly how bold the colors were when they were dry and I was happy with that. Once the background's done I can go ahead and start coloring my small pieces. Uh, these die cut pieces again are out of watercolor paper so they take the, the water and the paint just fine. I'm going to layer on the colors. Uh, I'll dry in between with my heat tool and then add a little more color just to get variation and texture. With these other tree pieces, I want it to mimic the fall leaves that change from green to yellow to the golden oranges and then reds. Um, sometimes it happens all on the same tree, so that's what I'm going for here with these trees. And I am going to dry in between because I don't want the green and the red to touch and make a muddy color. I want those colors to stay separate. And then with my pine trees, obviously they're evergreens, so I'm just going to come in and layer in more, more colors of green on top just so that I get more texture there. And if you let the colors dry a little bit in between, they don't blend out as much. So once I've got uh, the ferns and the trees painted, I'll go ahead and start working on the wood pieces, my tree branches or tree trunks there, and the sentiment, I want that to look like a, a rustic wooden sign. So I'm going to layer first a light golden, sort of a, a reddish brown, and I'll let that dry a little bit, and then I'll come back in with a darker brown. But I want to use a drier brush when I come in with the darker colors. So I'm not, I'm picking up color, but I don't have a, a dripping wet brush when I come back in with a dark color. I'll just, just pick up a little bit of color with as dry a brush as I can get so that I get sort of a streaky finish. And that gives me more of a wood grain look. And I'll just keep playing with it until I'm happy. Also with the sentiment, I'm going to be careful not to go too heavy with the colors because I want to make sure that I can still read it. I could have stamped in embossed in white, but all the rest of my stamping is in black and I just wanted it to be cohesive, so I knew that it would work just fine this way. Once I've got those die cut pieces colored, I'm going to work on my stamped pieces. And the detail here is a lot finer, so I want to use my Arteza Real Brush Markers. That way I can control how much color I'm laying down and where. They have a fine point so I can get into small areas without going over the lines if I don't want to. So I'm just going to quickly, quickly go through my coloring here. I sped it up like 20 times just so we're not watching me color all day long. And I've gone ahead and I've used some of the same colors that I used for my background. So I'll try to pull in the reds and oranges and the greens and the, a little bit of purple as well, just to kind of tie it all together. You'll notice that I only used one skin tone marker. Uh, in this set, this is the 48 set of Arteza Real Brush Markers, there's only one color that's a nice skin color for fair tones. Some of the, the browns, when I try to color with the browns and use a little bit of water to draw the color out, get my highlights and my shadows. Uh, the browns tend to turn a little bit green, which is actually normal. My Tombos do the same thing, but th it's not a good skin color. And then there are some yellows that are just too yellow, and like there's a peach that just turns really pink, and it, none of them really work super great except this one marker here. And I can't tell you the color because they are not labeled with colors. Um, but play around with them, see what you like. Uh, to get a little bit of variation in my girls, I do add more or less uh, layers of color. In fact, for our little girl holding the guitar here, I added uh, 
quite a few layers of color just to get some variation in the skin tones there. And then um, you'll notice with the marshmallows, I don't add any coloring because I'm gonna do that with my sweetened condensed milk, so I don't need to worry about shading there. Everything else, I kind of added shadows where I could. On my tent, I made it the same color green that my tent is, so it just seemed appropriate. And I added a little bit of silver uh, to the clips that hold the tent to the poles. Once I have all of my pieces colored, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the uh, fun smelling part of my card. So I've poured out about a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon actually, of the sweetened condensed milk into a little dish. It really doesn't take much. This is way more sweetened condensed milk than I needed, uh, but I haven't done this technique in a long time. My friend Ella taught me this uh, many moons ago at a Stampin' Up! party. It's a fun way to add texture to a background and your card will smell so good. In fact, everybody in my house came to see what I was cooking. And of course, I'm not cooking anything but a card. <laughs> um, but the whole house smelled great. It smells like toasted marshmallows. So what you're going to want to do is brush on a little bit of the sweetened condensed milk. You will see a little bit of your brush strokes, so kind of keep them all going in the same direction. And then bring in your heat gun, and you want to keep that heat gun moving around. It's, it's pretty quick to go from... Uh, the milk kind of boiling off and then start to caramelize. Those sugars will caramelize quickly and you want to be careful not to burn them. Just like a marshmallow, you don't want to have the heat there too long or you'll set them on fire and burn them. Um, so be careful with your sweetened condensed milk here. If you burn it, it won't smell very good. Um, when you're done, it is a little brittle. I would not suggest doing this on a piece that you're going to fold. And it's also tacky, like very sticky. So uh, that's why I'm going to use the cornstarch. You might be tempted to use your powder tool, but the powder tool smells like baby powder, at least mine does. Um, so I, I don't want to use that. It'll defeat the whole purpose of making it smell like marshmallows. I don't want it to smell like a baby with marshmallows. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add cornstarch over the top of all of these pieces. Uh, don't forget the marshmallows on our little girl here. Um, and I'm just using a clean dry brush, grabbing the cornstarch out of my jar there and you can be a little heavy-handed with it and brush off any extra you just want to get a good layer down there and then once you have everything coated kind of dry off or clean off that brush there and then get the extra out of the way just like you would with embossing on black cardstock with white powder we kind of go a little heavy-handed with our powder tool and then we can clean it all up afterwards doing the same thing here now, because there's a layer of cornstarch on here, and when I start gluing my pieces together, the, the cornstarch is gonna make the glue take a little bit longer to stick together, and I will have to use a little more glue than normal, but I'll show you that here. I wanna go ahead and start gluing all of my pieces that are like two or more parts together, just to get them, make them one unit so that they're easier to work with. So I'm gonna glue those mountain tops onto the mountains. And then I'm going to glue those two layers of fire together. Remember, I did reserve that other piece of the fire that I cut out, but it's not going to get glued to this part of the fire at all. I'll just have it for the background there. Now I can go ahead and trim out the mountain and those two ground layers uh, so that they are nine inches across, just like my card. And I marked the first side with my pencil so I can trim it down. And then I'll cut the other side. For the ground layers, because I cut them out of the same piece of paper, I'm going to offset the, the cuts a little bit. So I'll cut two inches off one side of the back piece, and then I'll cut two inches off the other side of the front piece, just so that those hills aren't exactly the same. And then I can go ahead and start laying out my main pieces here just so that I'll know roughly where my fire is going to be and I want to make sure I have placement figured out for those. I'm also going to finish gluing some of these other pieces together here. So that sign needs to get glued together with one of those small uh, tree trunks there and I'm just using the same PVA glue here and I will glue it together slightly askew so that it feels kind of rustic. 
I'll glue the other colorful trees together. And this is where I decided that they are too, too splotchy. I want them to be blended out a little bit more. All of my characters are blended more. So I just grabbed a paintbrush with clear water and I'm going to go over the edges and just kind of blend them out and soften it up a little bit. I'm still gonna be careful not to mix the green and red paints together because that will get muddy. Once I've got those done, now I'm gonna go ahead and work on my circuit. So I've figured out where the campfire is gonna be on the card and I'm using a pencil to mark it onto the mountain piece there. Then I can grab my eighth inch hole punch. I will punch through there and then I'm gonna use that pencil and I'm gonna mark onto the watercolor background there. And that's gonna give me the placement for my light, for the LED uh, sticker. It's a Chibitronic sticker that's in that kit. And I also wanna mark where I want my push button to be. So I was originally thinking it would be under Audra's hat there. So I marked that. And unfortunately my video was corrupted at this point. And of course that's the Kind of a critical part but i do have a video linked up above here that shows you how to run the the copper tape from the led to the power pack it's very simple you want to stick your led down it's a sticker so stick it right on top of that pencil mark that we made go ahead and stick your power pack down using some double stick tape and then there's a positive side and a negative side on both the LED and the power pack. They're clearly marked. And you're just gonna use some copper tape and connect the positive to the positive and negative to negative. Um, again, that video will walk you through all of it. It's got some tips and tex techniques there for you. Um, and I'm sorry, this was the best still I could grab from that <laughs> to show you that the circuit does work here. Um, but you'll see it again here in a second. So once I have the circuit run, I'm gonna start building up my background here. So I'm marked and I'm just gonna go ahead and punch out a hole for the first layer of the ground um, so the light can shine through, shine through the mountains, shine through the ground, and then ultimately come through uh, at the vellum piece. But before I glue all of the layers onto that background, I wanna go ahead and adhere it to my card. So I just used more of that same PVA glue and glued those together. Now my mountain piece, I want it to be flat to my card, so I need to cut out a notch because the battery portion, the, the power pack there, actually sticks up about the same thickness as a double layer of foam tape. So I'm gonna cut a notch. You can do this with, scissor, with scissors, but I happen to have the same die that I cut my sentiment out with, and it was just sitting on my desk, so I used that. I'll run it through my Big Shot, and then I've got a notch cut out. We're gonna completely cover this up, so don't worry about it. Like I said, you can use scissors. It does not have to be perfect. Um, then I can go ahead and glue this layer down flat to my card. And you'll see that everything lines up. The hole lines up right on top of the light and the light can shine through. That's what we wanted. I do have a little bit of copper tape poking out between the first two mountains on the left side there. That's okay, I'll cover those up as well with my trees. Um, now we can go ahead and start sticking the ground in place. So I've already punched out a hole through the back layer there. And this time, instead of cutting through for the power pack, I wanna start covering it up. Now, like I said, that that is as thick as a double layer of foam tape. Um, but I do want the circle that I cut out for the light to be flush to the card, flat against the card. So I'm gonna gradually um, adhere it to the card base where it, it goes from flat on the right side to popped up on the left side. So I marked with a pencil how high up the ground comes and then I'm going to stick a double layer of foam tape under those pencil marks on either side of the battery and that's just going to give me a cushion to grab onto that part. And then I'm going to apply glue to the rest of the the strip there. I don't have to come all the way across where the foam tape is because the foam tape will grab it. And I'll line it up and pop it in place. Again, I'm making sure that that light is able to shine through that hole there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the second layer of the ground down. I've already punched a hole through there. And I've also punched a hole through that back piece of the fire, that reserved piece. And I will go ahead and glue that flat to the card as well. And again, like I said, with the cornstarch, uh, you have to use a little more glue and hold it down just a little bit longer as you go 
that way the glue will really uh, grab on from one layer to the next. So when I've got my uh, back piece of fire glued down, I'm going to go ahead and prep the, the top of the fire here. Now, if I glued the fire flat to the card at this point, then the light will only come through in that one point. I want to kind of spread it out a little bit more, have it come through more of that vellum. So I've got a double layer of foam tape down at the bottom. And then because you would see it at the top, I'm going to use clear uh, foam tape for the top of the fire. That's from Cool Tack, and it's the same thickness as regular foam tape, so I doubled it up just like I did down below. And then I can go ahead and um, just make sure that, that I like the way that that lights up. And it does, it's, it's kind of hard to tell on, on the video, but in person the, the light spreads out a little bit more through that vellum. I'm not going to stick it down just yet because I want to get the pieces behind it glued down first. So I will just go ahead and kind of line everything up, glue it down as I go. Um, at this point, I decided that instead of writing push on the hat of our, our one girl, um, that's actually Audra, she's the owner of Kindred, Kindred Stamps, um, I decided that I wanted to stamp push here on my tree instead, and I'll use that to cover up the button. So I grabbed this interactive um, set from Lawn Fawn, I think it's called Interactively Yours, I'll have a link in my blog. And then I went ahead and stamped it with the VersaFine Claire, the black ink, that's the same black ink that I used for the rest of my stamping. I coated it with clear embossing powder and then I'll melt it with my heat gun. And then that way the stamping is the same all the way across the card. And then after that it's just a matter of gluing everything else in place. So I did use a single layer of foam tape behind my sentiment and also behind my two girls in the front here. Their sticks are on top of the, the fire, which is a double layer of foam tape, but it's fine. They actually kind of pop up and it looks really cool. And then I just filled in more of the background with these little ferns. So they're perfect for like little filler there. And then I can go ahead and trim away anything that's hanging off the edge. And then the very last thing that I'll do is grab my aqua shimmer pen and add a little sparkle to my flame it just kind of gives it a little sparkle when it, the button is not pushed. Now in that video that I linked to earlier, there is a way to show you how to send these cards through the mail. This, this card is no thicker than a double layer of foam tape at any point, so it'll go through the mail just fine. However, if the button is pushed while it's in transit, you can wear out the battery. So in that other video, I do have a quick tip in there to show you how to place a piece of acetate or paper underneath the battery so that it can't complete the circuit while it's in transit. So that finishes up my card. What do you think? I love the way the warm fall colors blend with the, the cool purple and the greens in this card. I think it's a great combination. And then you actually have that added bonus of that smell. Now that smell won't last forever and you do want to cover a big piece so that it lasts a little bit longer, but it's fun. And also this card does have sugar on it, so it's not a keep forever card. Give it away quickly and tell the recipient not to hold on to it forever because they wouldn't want ants. Um, let me know in the comments below what your favorite fall colors are. Would you have used purple in this? And I have a link down below to the uh, next video in our hop. Please do hop along with us. I've also got a link to my blog with all the products that I used. And if you want to come back here after you hop along with us, you can see more interactive cards. And if you like today's video, go ahead and click subscribe. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.